say amen. amen. Let the church say amen like we really mean it. Amen. All right, we're thankful God has blessed us once again to be able to come together at this time to worship him in spirit and in truth. Special welcome to those who are visiting. We want you to know that you're honored guests and we're certainly happy you decided to be with us in our services on this morning and also welcome to those who are worshiping and visiting with us uh, live stream. If you are visiting and you did not get a chance to fill out a visitor's card, if you will, just raise your hand and one of our urchins will give you a card and we'll be recognizing you at the proper time. Any visitors that did not get a chance to fill out a visitor's card on this morning? All right, in the way of announcements, and I know uh, Dot and the ladies' ministry wants to thank uh, those who participated in the prayer breakfast uh, this past Saturday. We understand Bobby and Raven did an outstanding job. Let's give them a love deposit. So if you missed it, I understand you missed a real, real treat. Yeah. Also, uh, Mahogany informed me that she will be registered at babieslist.com. Uh, my little grandson will be here, I believe, in May. I'm going to put a lawnmower in his hand as soon as he gets here. <laughs> Shower information uh, is forthcoming, so please uh, keep that in mind. Also, this is from uh, Sister Carney. She says, thanks for helping our sister in Christ at Port Gibson that was burnt out. Says the family is forever uh, grateful. This comes from uh, Sister Carney. All right, also, as far as the black history uh, schedule is concerned, first of all, let me say that everybody looks good in your attire. You're looking, looking wonderful, quite wonderful. Thank you, God, may God bless you, and may he bless you real good. All right, this coming Wednesday, which is February the 23rd, uh, we will have our youth Zoom Black History program, and that will start at 6 p.m. And I'm assuming that the codes will be sent out or placed on uh, our Facebook page. So let's get prepared to uh, participate in that. Also on Saturday, uh, February the 26th, the Black History Visual program will take place at 6 p.m. And we're asking for uh, $20 donations for that. As you all know, we raise funds for Christian uh, education. Sunday, which is next Sunday, the 27th, uh, we're asked to wear our favorite HBCU jersey or T-shirt. That's for uh, next large day. Let's continue to pray for our sister Dorothy Daniels. Uh, she's home again fighting uh, illness. We want to keep her in prayer. Then also, uh, you all probably know that our own brother, Benoit Johnson, passed away this past week. 
I certainly we want to uh, pray for the family and pray for all of us. It was a great loss. Uh, he touched all of our lives, old and young. Bernard was that kind of person. Uh, this coming Friday will be the viewing, the public viewing. It'll be from 2 to 3 p.m. at Jackson Memorial, and services will be here at the building uh, next Saturday at uh, 11 o'clock. So let's Again, keep the family in prayer, and let's pray for each other in this uh, great loss. Stand to your feet. Let's just do our abbreviated meet and greet. Turn to your left and to your right, and just say, I'm plumb glad to see you on this morning. Plumb glad to see you. Plumb glad to see you. All right. God bless you. You may be seated at this time. Turn the service back over to our great song leaders. God bless you. Well, he said, he said, he said, if I, if I would live, well, you know, God said, he said, if I, if I would live, you know that God said, he said, if I, if I would live, he said, he would make my to leave the way he said he said he said if I if I would pray you know that my God says he said if I if I would pray I know that God said he said he said if I if I would he said he would make my all my enemy just to leave the way hell I'm on. I'm on that right road now. Yeah, you know that I'm on. Yes, I'm on that right road now. Well, I tell you, I fixed it, Jesus, and it was a long time ago, you know that I'm on, yes, I'm on that right road now, well, he said, he said, if I, if I would love you know my God said, he said, he said if, I, if I, if I would love, love you know that God said, he said, he said if, I, if I, if I would love, he said he would make my, all my enemies just to leave. Jesus, <laughs> I tell you, I fixed it. I fixed it up with Jesus. I fixed it. I fixed it up with Jesus. But not Johnson fixed it. I fixed it up with Jesus. A long time ago. I fixed it up with Jesus. I fixed it. I fixed it. I fixed it up with Jesus. I fixed it. And it was a long, long time ago. You know that I'm on. Yes, I'm on that right road now. Well, he said, he said, he said, if I, if I would. Love, 
Father, you have did it again. You have allowed us to be here and to be still on this time side of life. We thank you. We thank you for doing this for, for us from our early existence up until now. Keeping us as you allow us to travel and go through life way and you kept us from evil and allowed us to be in thy place of worship. Amen. To render praises to thy holy and divine blessed name. We thank you. We thank you for Jesus that made it all possible that we can come before that of ours. Words again can be brought that is suitable for thy presence. Thank the Holy Spirit, Lord of our heart. We just thank you, Lord, rule of all. We ask again that you forgive us for all sins, those that we omitted as well as committed. Now we ask and pray for those in our viewing audience and those that are here, one by one, name by name, that you'd work and help them and keep them in only ways that you know how. Help them all of us to realize that each and every day is a blessing that we can be in a spiritual light that is so needed to shine in the midst of spiritual darkness. That the world may know there is a reality in serving you. We want to thank you. We ask and pray for those that are sick, those that are convalescent, and those that are loved, loved ones that made transition. Our own beloved uh, Bernard that's, come, going, that's come, come, come on home to be with you and stay with his family back there and comfort them in only ways that you know how. Stay with Sister Dorothy and all of those. That, uh, that is need of, of your divine help in every way and only way that you can. We ask and pray that you continue to stay with church doors that are open in your name. That we all as leaders will be a spiritual light and take advantage of the opportunity knowing time is a tremendous asset that you allow us to have. That we will have a sense of urgency about doing your will and being able to bring others out of ignorance and into the reality of truth before you call us home in every way. We ask and pray that you continue to stay with those that we will do just that. Stay with our minister that is coming before us that the things that have been he have studied that will be able to depart it to the hero to be able to build us up. Keep us all. Stay with us all. Stay with most of all again our nation and keep her in every way and help her to, uh, to stand that we continue to have these freedoms to live and worship without fear or intimidation. Uh, any such thing, freedoms that we do take for granted. Go with them. Stay with our first responders. Stay with us in every way that we continue to have this a great advantage that we have to be able to spread your word without fear that others in other nations do not have. Keep us in your care, in your love, in every way. You're always giving you the credit and every bit of the glory. This we pray in our dear beloved sweet son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Does everyone have the Lord's Supper? You don't raise your hand, and the usher will assist you at this time. Let us break, break some bread together. We're on our knees, on our knees. Lord, and let us break, break some bread together. We're on our knees, on our knees. And Lord, when we fall down on our knees, when with our face to the rising sun, somebody ought to say, Lord, have mercy, have mercy on me. some bread to get down on our knees, on our knees, Lord, and let us break, break some bread together, well, now on our knees, oh, Lord, now on our knees, said when we fall down on our knees, well, now with our face to the rising sun. Somebody ought to say, Lord, have a mercy, have a mercy on me, oh Lord, on me. on me. Come on and let us break, break some bread to down on our knees, oh Lord, let us break, let us break. 
break some bread together down on our knees. Well, on our knees, set a wind and we fall down on our knees. Set a wind, our face to the rising sun. Somebody ought to say, Lord, somebody say, Lord, yes, somebody shout, Lord, I have a mercy, have mercy on me, oh, Lord, on me. Amen. We have come to the part of service where we are commanded to remember the sacrifice that Christ made on the cruel cross of Calvary, dying for our sins because we couldn't die for ourselves. We find an example of when the early church did this in Acts 20 and 7. It says, upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached to them and read the part tomorrow and continued his speech until midnight. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 23, it says, for I received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do remember to me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new test in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it and remember to me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Let us give thanks for the bread uh, and the cup. Then, Father, we thank you for this bread, which is your son's body, which was broken on the cross for our sins. We also come thank you for this cup, uh, which is your son's blood, which was shed on the cross for our sins. God, we, we also thank Christ for his selflessness that he showed by going to die uh, for our sins. And we thank you for this great sacrifice that he made. We pray that as we take it, we take it with a mindset and remember those things that he did. And we pray that we take it with clean, heart, clean hands and pure heart and understanding of what was accomplished on the cross. It's all you bless you in son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Me not, oh gentle Savior, why don't you be my all, oh Christ? Yeah, anybody here? Please. 
him. Say, please hear my humble, my humble cry. Well, and while, while on others thou art called holy, well, do, do not pass me by. Amen. Also, on the first day of the week, the Lord has commanded us to give uh, as we has prospered. God has always required his people, even in the Old Testament, to make a sacrificial giving. Uh, we need to give with the understanding that the giving is not for God, but it's for our own benefits and for our own harvest. We find an example when the early church gave in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. It says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every man lay by him his store, as God has prospered him. There be no gatherings when I come. Also in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 6, we find the attitude we should have when we, should, when we give. It says, For this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good works. Let us give thanks for the offer. Now, Father, we pray that as we give, that we not give grudgingly, but we give with a mindset, God, uh, there will be cheerful givers in praying that the money will be used for the further of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for everything that you've done, realizing and have us to have the understanding and the mindset that everything that we have, our resources belong to you, and we're just stewards over everything that we have. God, we just ask all these blessings that you bless the monies that is given to today, and bless their seed sown. It's all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, oh Lord, oh Lord, I have a come, I come to receive, to receive my blessing. Well, I'm patiently waiting, patiently waiting. Oh Lord, for the harvest, for the harvest is now. Well, I've got the Hebrews, I've got the Hebrews 11 and 1. Well, I've got a faith, faith to know of my blessing. To receive my blessing, I'm patiently waiting. I'm patiently waiting. Lord, for the harvest, for the harvest is now. Well, I've got the Hebrews, I've got the Hebrews, the Hebrews 11, and well, the kind of faith, faith to know of my blessing. Well, and it's mine. Says, I'm existing on is a word of well, everything. Of, oh Lord, that I need. Of, well, I believe He gave it to me. Well, He's the Father of real good pleasure of the kingdom, and it's mine. Well, and it's mine. To receive my blessing, said I'm patiently waiting. I'm patiently waiting. Well, for the harvest, for the harvest is. Well, I've got the Hebrews, the Hebrews 11. Well, the kind of faith, faith to know my blessing. Well, and it's mine. A long time ago, I yes, I know I that I'm going to get it, y'all. Why? Because the Bible I tells me so. Well, now he's a father of real good pleasure of the kingdom. And it's mine, Lord, it is mine.
come to receive and to receive my blessing. I'm patiently waiting. I'm patiently waiting. Lord, for the harvest, for the harvest season. Well, I've got the Hebrews. I got the Hebrews 11. Well, the kind of faith, faith to know my blessing. Well, they despise. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is going to come from Ephesians 1, verses 8 through 12. Again, that's Ephesians 1, verses 8 through 12. And it reads, Wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he has purposed in himself, that in dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together, one, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. I've just read to you Ephesians 1, verses 8 through 12. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his holy and divine word. When the Savior calls, I will answer. Oh, when he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. Oh, I'll be somewhere just listening for my name. I'll be somewhere, I'll be listening, I'll be somewhere, I'll be listening, I'll be somewhere just listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere, I'll be listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, if my robe My heart is right, oh, when he calls yeah, me, oh, if my heart is right, I'm gonna hear, well, if my heart is right, when he calls me, oh, I'll be somewhere listening for my
I love him, 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 I love him,
some praise this morning if you really love the Lord. Give God some praise this morning if you really love the Lord. I said give him some praise this morning if you really love the Lord. God is good. God is definitely good. One of these days we're going to see his face. He said he has a prepared place for us with many rooms. I mentioned but it has many rooms. I don't know about y'all but I want to move in one of them rooms. Anybody want to move in one of them rooms? Well, and I want to move in the room with the, in the room with the Lord. Well, I just want to move in the room with the, in the room with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't you know that I never been there in the bottom? I've been told you know the game. I've been in the rooms and the streets I go. We're going to move. Yes, 
serve a mighty good God and he is not just good some of the time God is good all of the time and all of the time God is good and if God has been good to you say amen if he's brought you from nowhere to somewhere say amen again set your feet on solid ground say amen again and if you love the Lord say amen again we love the lost church. Say amen again. We love the lost church. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I love you. And ain't nothing funny about my love. <clears throat> there ought not be anything funny about the love that we have one for the other. We ought to have agape love, and that is a love that is in spite of and not because of. And certainly, uh, that is the kind of love that we ought to have among uh, one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to thank the brethren for their uh, leading us in our devotional service and those who uh, had the prayer, one who had the prayer and, and one who read scripture uh, and, one, and the ones who have led us in this spiritual and spirited praise amen it's always good to just just praise god sometimes and sometimes when you don't know what to do just go ahead and praise him and for his goodness and for his his amazing and marvelous grace i tell you god is good it's, it's been certainly a trying week, and uh, and sometimes you know troubling, but God always come through, and He knows the grace that we need. And sometimes we just need more grace uh, to deal with what we are dealing with. We certainly want to uh, continue to, as Brother Wayne is saying, keep. Uh, all of us in prayer, and especially, you know, uh, Johnny and the family in prayer in uh, the passing of Bernard. Um, I won't go into all the adjectives to describe him to me, but I, I just just want to, you know, for, uh, be encouraged uh, to Pray for all of us, <laughs> amen, and because we have certainly lost a great soldier in the army of the Lord. And uh, what helps me to uh, keep from being 
um, I guess, uh, so downhearted is that I, I can't help but think about it. When I think about it, I think about all them jokes. <laughs> and he over on the other side, joking, still joking. Yeah, still cracking jokes. Praise the Lord. Now, the reason why I know that is because uh, we are threefold beings. And uh, the spirit is the real you, and, and that soul is your personality. And the body, you know, is the house. And so we do not lose our personality when we go over on the other side. We keep the same personality. And so he has his personality uh, cracking jokes over there on the other side. Amen. With those who have already over there, I'm sure there was a great welcome, welcoming committee. We are sad no more here, but I tell you, they are happy over there. And you just thank God for his life. Amen. Amen. I tell you, I can say a lot of things. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but it's good to see you, uh, all of you here this morning. Amen. I don't know, numbers, uh, you know, we're going to have to close in a little bit more to accommodate. A Amen. Amen. No, it's soldier just six feet. Yeah, well, well we we probably moved a little by four feet. <laughs> and four feet because uh, I'm sure you, you know, you still wearing, we still wearing masks and we still, you know, you know, encourage you to get your vaccinations and and uh, so forth. And uh, we were not going to do this salute one another with the holy kiss. So, yeah, yeah and, uh, probably, probably not do a whole lot of hugging. It made we just say a holy kiss bump. <laughs> yeah, y'all looking good in your African American attire. And my son, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, husband, wife, dress, coordinating, and all that good stuff. That's all right. That's all right. My son said uh, he did, but he didn't have his attire, African attire, and they're gonna be asking me where you at, uh, your African attire. And I said, tell him you just, you are African American and this is your attire. <laughs> Amen. You're African American. This is your attire. Um, but even with the sadness, we've had uh, this week some great joys and, and great praises of God. And, and one I want to uh, mention to you. Uh, is the uh, ladies prayer breakfast amen outstanding outstanding the program i wish they just could could put that program up on the screen but but everybody everybody i want to want to give a, a did an outstanding outstanding job uh yeah now they said how you know preacher i was online i was live i was right there amen so I said, why you, they say, uh, uh, my wife said, I, we got a spy, uh, amen. But now I wasn't no spy, uh, I was just biblical. Oh, the Bible tells me to watch thou in all things. And so I was watching and listening and, and being lifted up, uplifted in everything that went on. Uh, all the prayers and, and the, uh, that was uh, prayed was outstanding amen all the prayers and all you know the remarks and especially so the two main people uh, one for the youth exhortation Raven Doss let's give her a, a, a amen she did an outstanding job I'm so proud of our young people amen they are getting the message and we thank God for them and thank God for their parents. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know they're proud over there. Hey, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and then uh, for the adult uh, exhortation, uh, Bobby Bandit. Hey, you talking about coming out. <laughs> you talking about somebody coming out. <laughs> Uh, where is Bobby? She did an outstanding. I, I, I almost didn't recognize her when she was in the speech. I didn't, right 
Oh, boy, I tell you, Bobby did an outstanding job. Covered all bases, you know. And I just going around the house and had to go up front. Uh, and I just said, look at Bobby. I was listening to, look at Bobby. Look at Bobby. <laughs> uh, amen, amen, amen. And she was all in the, in the core values and spirit, making practical application. I said, look at Bobby. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you, Bobby, you done, you done messed up. You done come out. Yeah, I'm going to recommend your name for national for the national lectureship. But you won't have, yeah, and I want you to get <laughs> second to none. Amen, second to none. I was, and then I want to certainly give uh, Sister Bedenfield and my wife, their team working together for an outstanding, outstanding program and, and, and well coordinated. Now, one, Sister Bedford got a gift. Now, now, really, she got gifts. They're not just one gift. She know how to keep a program going. She know how to put a program together and she know how to keep it moving. Praise the Lord. <laughs> With no interruption. Amen. And, and I'm so glad that uh, it was recorded, and so we can go back to it. And uh, and, and I, I certainly recommend the ladies, you know, to go back and review it and everything. Every, all the prayers, I mean, all the prayers, I tell you, were outstanding to the point. And uh, I know uh, his eyes and his ears was open. And that's what the book said to our prayers. Amen, amen. Yeah, we had to, I just, I, I, I need just, uh, if I got them on here, let me see. All the ones that prayed. So y'all know who prayed. And I'm telling you, brethren, they prayed. We got some praying sisters. <laughs> Amen. Amen. C.J. Upkins. Uh, Amen. Started out with prayer. Give her, let's give her a little deposit as well. And then the scripture reading, Jeanette, uh, Hester read scripture, uh, song, Stan, uh, Allie, and, uh, uh, and Miriam, they did an outstanding job. I tell you, so look at Allie. <laughs> Amen. I just, I tell you, I enjoyed the program uh, 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 immensely. And then we had a prayer by Catrice uh, Swapshire. Um, <clears throat> And they had on the program a serenity prayer where everybody, uh, 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 Sister Benfield had, uh, had everybody, you know, to say the prayer. Uh, she said together, but uh, it was like they were speaking in tongues, but they all say it the prayer. <laughs> but they, they prayed, they prayed the serenity prayer. Uh, amen. Uh, then we had a poem of encouragement uh, from Sister Carolyn uh, Upkins. Outstanding. She she has a way. She she's another one that's that's just multi uh, gifted, and she has a way with words and know how to put words together and make them make them blend and make them rhyme and all that good stuff and make them relevant as well. We we appreciate that, uh, uh, Carolyn. Song Shalon, she she had a little difficulty finding, uh, but uh, like I said, Sister Benefit kept the program moving, and Amen. Miran just right, just blend, just start started singing the song, and others I believe, uh, and they went on Sun to Sun. Shalon, I think I don't know whether she came in late or not, but it had some difficulty, but everything was done done outstanding. We appreciate that uh, so well. Then we have a prayer from their sister from Florida, the Sunshine State. Praise the Lord. Alligator Country did an outstanding job. Person, prayer in the person of Sandra. Sandra know how to mess with a little bit. Sandra Watts. Amen. Let's give her a little positive. And then the uh, uh, song by Sherelle, LaShure, and her daughters. They, they all blended in. And, 
Amen. On the screen, they did a great job, outstanding. And then uh, the uh, the closing, well, not the closing prayer, but uh, Margaret Scribner, you know, she tried to jump in before. Had two people, said, and Dolly tell her, not your time, yeah, that time. They just let her know she was ready. <laughs> she was ready. When her time came, boy, she really prayed a prayer. Send it up to help. And we just thank God for Margaret. Uh, and then had the closing rods announcement, and, and Miriam did a closing song, and then our own uh, Sandra Oscar. Praise the Lord. I mean, she lifted up in prayer, closed it out. Praise God. I just thank God for all of our, our sisters and, and for their participation and for their encouragement and uh, and 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 for their uh, commitment uh, to the cause of Christ, and don't mind. And not only this congregation was blessed and encouraged. Um, we had uh, they had I think a total about what seventy, yeah, eight uh, sisters and some of us from other areas, uh, preachers, wives. So the message went off all across uh, the, the country. Amen. Amen. That now this is her. Huh? This is her. Y'all back off of y'all in the verse. Bring that chair up here. Or you go back. <laughs> Just off the anniversary. <laughs> yeah. They were up front together, you know, before they went on the uh, yeah. Up front, two seats right together. Come back up. Uh, I'm looking for this. <laughs> y'all match. Y'all go. <laughs> Amen. Lovely, lovely, beautiful couple. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so glad to have him back. Amen. We, I thought it was going to be gone a month. <laughs> I, but I ain't no telling, I ain't no telling. Yeah. I say, is it a month or is it a week? A week or is it a month? And he responded to it. I'll just leave it there. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome those, especially on our live screen. Thank you for watching and those who are here who are our guests who are visiting with us today. And we appreciate your presence and we trust something will be said to give a, a better understanding of God's will and God's way. How many of y'all brought your Bibles today? It won't take me long this morning. Amen, amen, amen. I want to thank uh, also our, our buildings and grounds. They, they, are, they are back home now. They finished up, uh, you know, partially with the first phase there in Lexington. So they have come back home and we got... We got y'all see how bright it is in here, yeah, yeah. And they're changing the lights all over the city. Have y'all noticed that? Y'all hadn't noticed that, especially in the black folk neighborhood. They lighten up everything. <laughs> they don't want nobody hiding around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's bright lights here. Yeah, amen. The lights are going to light, light up. But it's a, it's a great job. I don't know y'all noticed, but we, it's brighter in here, you know. We are the light of the world, aren't we? Yeah, one of the, uh, I think one of the uh, depressing things I've ever experienced in my travels in preaching is to go into a dark, dim building. Amen. And that just really sets the tone because if you're in a dark, dim place, that that messes with your spirit. Praise the Lord. It messes with your spirit. And know the folk is not uh, 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 peppy. Uh, they're not, uh, you know, shining lights. They're not really uplifted because, you know, there's not enough light. Well, that's enough of that. Y'all did about your Bibles. Y'all did bring your Bibles. Okay. Uh, let's turn to Ephesians. <laughs> Ephesians. We're still in Ephesians. 
And we're still in Ephesians. Praise the Lord. We're still in Ephesians. Um, Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse, uh, begin with verse number 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on the earth even in him. Is that in your Bibles? Let us pray. Our Father and our God is once again that we come before your throne of grace. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise on our lips. For thou art worthy to be praised. We are thankful most of all for Jesus Christ who gave his life that we might have life. We are thankful for the church of Christ which he purchased with his own blood. We are thankful for the gospel of Christ which indeed has the power to save the whole world. And Father, we are thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, who teaches us, who guides us, who shows us things to come, bring back to remembrance the things that we've studied, and also gives us the power to be victorious in life. And Father, we ask now that we allow your word to have free course in our hearts, that we will receive with meekness the engrafted word uh, that's able to save our souls. Use me as a vessel to proclaim your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' holy name that we ask it all. Let the church say amen. Amen. Um, I, 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 before I preach, I want to share with you some more good news and um, that we had uh, uh, two baptisms this past week. And I know the young man that was baptized, uh, Brother Bedenfield, uh, matter of fact, was through Brother Billy Ray and Brother Billy Ray uh, got in touch with Brother Bedenfield to um, explain to him some things about baptism because he wanted to be baptized. And uh, and they did meet over here, and and that uh, he was taught the way of the Lord more perfectly, and made his commitment in being baptized in the Christ. Amen. I don't, I don't know whether he's here today or not, but do we do have our baptism? Soon? And then on uh, uh, last night, uh, my granddaughter. Curtis T. Dowdle decided to put the Lord on in baptism. Amen. Was baptized on uh, last night. My son did the baptizing. We took the pictures. Uh, but uh, she wanted all the family to be there. Last call because I, I didn't get the, uh, the memo right. I just thought that, you know, it was already done. He called me later on and said, where y'all? What, what, where y'all? You used the word, the police, my word, what, what's y'all, uh, uh, what the police said when they want to know your, uh, where you are, or position, they, uh, where's your location? They want to give the location. That's what he said. Well, look, yeah, we at home. He said, well, we at the building. We were getting ready to baptize in. I said, I, I thought y'all already had done it. And so we got some shoes on and, and raced over to the building and uh, witnessed uh, her becoming a new creature in Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, I was told after that, uh, after we did the baptism, that she, uh, and she wasn't letting anybody know about it. I asked her, I said, now, now when you fill out the paper, I said, well, what, 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 what? Uh, what, 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 where do you work? You know, what's your job? She said, I don't have no job. And uh, her, her daddy corrected her. You tell them about you in school. You are, that's your job. <laughs> well, uh, Curtis T don't remember. He uh, and Bean, they were all talking. And he was talking about his job. And they had jobs, this job, that he going to be. And, and, and Bean said, 
uh, you ain't got no job. You say, yes, I have got a job. My job is in school. I'm a student. I'm a, hey, man, that's my job to get my lesson <laughs> to be a good student. Hey, Amen. But I was informed that, uh, uh, what, what was it? 4.0. As of average, 4.0. All A's. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't expect no less because, you know, it's in the Pitman's blood. We all. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And so there's always some good news. Yeah, thank God for the good news. Amen. And I got to tell on Sister Scribble. I'm going to get into the lesson. I've got to tell on her. She said, she put on Facebook, Doc. She put on Facebook. She said, we're hearing all this bad news. I'm going to give you some good news. And guess what the good news was? The plan of salvation. Hearing, believing. <laughs> you didn't think I saw that. <laughs> yeah, she so said, here's some good news for you. Amen, amen. I am coming out in view of God's eternal purpose. I'm coming out in view of God's eternal purpose. Turn to your neighbor once again and tell your neighbor, I'm coming out. I'm coming out in view of God's eternal purpose. I'm coming out of my stagnation. I am coming out of my isolation. I'm coming out of my polarization, frustration, and immobilization. Coming out of fear with faith, complacency with urgency, doubt with determination, uh, weakness with strength, timidness with boldness. I'm coming out in view of God's eternal purpose. Because whatever the situation or the circumstances, God's purpose has not changed. That, that's why I want to get us to see. That's why I'm doing it a series. I, I don't care what you're going through in life or what's happening in the world today. Amen. And we can get so caught up in what is going on in the world today. And uh, we got, because we got the 25, 24 hour news channels and they want to keep you abreast of what's going on. And, and I'm just sick and tired. I'm just tired of uh, waiting for Russia to invade. Every day is he going to invade. Well, hey man, well, man, go on and invade. Let me just keep talking about invading. Yeah, America saying, yeah, it's, it's right imminent. He's going he's to do it today. Why well, keep talking about that? Hey Amen. The man going to invade, he's going to invade. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey Amen. But regardless of what's going on in the world today, regardless of what's even happening, it's happening even in your life, in my life. God's eternal purpose has not changed. And I know that's true because one of my favorite passages, you know, uh, chapters is Romans chapter 8. And, uh, you know, verse 28, and the Bible says, and we know. And Paul is, is talking to the Romans and Roman Christians. He's saying to the Roman Christian, we know. Uh, regardless of what's happening in your life and what you're going through, there's some things you got to know. Praise the Lord. There's some things you got to know. And, and, and when you know it, you got to believe it and trust in it. Because in Romans 8, 28, he says, and we know that God working all things together for good to them that what? Love God to them that are called according to his purpose. 
Then verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He has promised that he will work all things together for the good of those who love God. All things. He has brought all things. Yes, think of it all things. Say all things. All things include all things. Not some things, but all things. What the things are, they are all things. Regardless of what the thing is, it's all things. And he is working it together for our good. Well, somebody said, what are some of those things? Well, uh, we can say sorrowful things. Things that cause us sorrow and cause us sadness and cause us grief. We may not understand it. He didn't say it was good, but he said that he'll work it out for our good. So if you're going through sadness, as we all are going through right now, uh, if you're going through grief, uh, uh, as we all are going through right now, uh, you're going through sadness, as we all are going through right now, he has promised, I'll work it all together for your good. We may not see good in it. Amen. It is not good that we feel but it's the new good news that God is working even in the things that cause us sadness and cause us sorrow. He has not stopped working. Praise the Lord. He has not stopped working when we are in grief because he is the God of all comfort. He is still working to comfort us. Amen. And the way he does the comforting, he does it through his word, uh, but also he does it through other people. Amen. I've had so many people to come and give me comfort. Say words of comfort. Say words of encouragement. They just knew how close we, uh, we, we are. And they knew that I needed a little encouragement. And they were saying things to encourage me. That's God working. When I couldn't understand, I, and it's all right to ask God why. I was asking why. Why the timing? I, you know, I, you know and, and God revealed to me that uh, it, it, it's not, uh, don't focus on what happened. Focus on what didn't happen. <laughs> what didn't happen. What he could have happened while we were traveling up, uh, up, up uh, as I talked about Bedfield, as we traveled up to Lexington. It could have happened then. Praise the Lord. It could have happened because, you know, uh, some of y'all know, you know, Bro Adam Van, know how, you know, Bernard kind of put his foot to the pedal and, and get the time. But it could have happened. So I focus on uh, what uh, didn't happen. He passed away at home. Praise the Lord. Uh, in, in, in the bed. Look at what didn't happen. And all the trips we had, all the places we've gone. Uh, he was driven nine and ten hours straight, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. And all the places I was in, I'm, I'm probably preaching the eulogy right now, but amen. And all the, all the places in the, in, the, in the hotels we were in and meetings that was on, he was driving, but we didn't have not one incident. Not one incident. The whole time and all the troubles, not one incident. So God said, focus on what didn't happen. Praise the Lord. What, what didn't happen. And then God gave me some wisdom. I asked him for wisdom. I said, why? Why timing? Why now? You know, why now? He at Lexington and so forth. The people he brought out in Lexington, and friends and family he influenced, uh, uh, connected with in Lexington. I, I was asking, why now? And God lets me know he sees further than 
He is an omniscient. And God sees, uh, uh, you know, years ahead. He, he knew what was up the road. Amen. And I have to learn, and we all have to learn to trust God. God's timing. Amen. It's not our time. And I'm just going to trust his timing. Praise the Lord. Yes, I, I, I'm sorrowful. I'm sad. But I, I, I believe and I know according to God's word, he's working even in my sorrow. He's working uh, not only in my uh, sorrow and your sorrow. He's working uh, even in satanic things, things that Satan brings on us. He's still working because he will not allow Satan to just have his way with us. He will not, just like he did with Job, he, he got a hedge around us. And he just let Satan go so far. Uh, amen. He, uh, he's still working even in satanic things. And when Satan tried to get to us and the things that he does, he, he wants us to despair. He, he wants us to, to give up. He wants us to become discouraged, but, but God knows how to encourage his children. He knows how to encourage us in our lowest uh, points in life because he knows Satan is under attack and he's walking about seeking whom he may devour. And you know, Satan knows what, 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 what you cherish most. Amen. He knows what you are committed most to. And he knows that you, when you are committed to the Lord and you are committed uh, to him, he, he wants to try to discourage you, distract you, disappoint. Amen. But God is still working and he's still in control. He knows just how much we can bear. Amen. I feel like preaching, but I, I don't have a whole lot of time left. But I want you to know that he uh, uh, he's working in satanic things. But not only is he working in sinful or uh, uh, satanic things, he's working in sinful things. Amen. He's working in sinful things because the things that we do, amen, that is contrary to his will. A, in the be, a disobedience, uh, he is still working. What is he doing? He's giving us more grace. He's showing us his love. And sometimes it takes uh, a man, uh, uh, something like that to happen uh, so that we can realize and understand God's grace. When we return, repent of our sins, come back to him, God open his arms open, uh, his arms are open to us. Why do you say it, preacher? Because I got an example of the prodigal son over there in Luke, uh, somewhere, one of those chapters in Luke. It may be 15, 16, 17. We're just going to look at all of them. Uh, about the prodigal son, we mostly look at what, what is it? 16, I know it was 15, 16, 17, somewhere in there. Amen. But you know, the prodigal son, it, 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 the story about the prodigal son is more uh, about the father than it is the son. Because the son was the one that left. Praise the Lord. The son was a give me my portion. Amen. The son said, well, actually, the son was saying to his daddy, I can't wait till you die. Amen. I want mine right now. That's what we was telling the dad. That's what he was telling his dad. Amen. But the dad said, you know, divided the portion among them. Amen. And he went off. Amen. In the rise of living. Yeah, he went off and had a good time. Had plenty of friends. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you got some money and you out there partying, you're going to have some friends. And mo a whole lot of them. And most of them going to be broke. Amen. I, I, I praise the Lord. How you know, preacher? I can remember. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They'll party with you as long as you got some money. As long as you got something. But then when he, he got broke, yeah, found himself in the pig pen. Amen. I, my question, where them friends at? 
Praise the Lord. You, you, where the friends that you've been setting up for? Praise the Lord. Y'all know the expression set up, no? Yeah, some of y'all quiet, but y'all know. Now, these young folk may not know, but us, uh, you know, uh, sit up or uh, sit out. You know, they sit in the table for you at the club. <laughs> yeah, man. And when the money's gone, those friends, fair weather friends, they gone. They gone. And he found himself in the pig pen. But thank God, the Bible says he came to himself. Sometimes we just need to come to ourselves and realize how good we have it. Amen. Uh, yeah, sometimes we need to just come to ourselves and realize the blessings and the goodness and the love of God and come to ourselves. Men of folk who have left the church, you just need to come to yourself. Repent and come on back to the Lord. Amen. Quit, quit making excuses. I talked to a brother, I don't know if he's here today, but I just talked to a brother uh, I've seen in a long time and called him up and and just to encourage him to come on back. Time is short. You don't know what death is. And it is a sad thing to be caught out. Yeah, outside the ark of safety. And uh, he said he was going to be here. I said, don't, 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 don't put it off. Make a commitment. Don't say I'm going to try. Say I'm going to be there. You know, it's an amazing thing when it, when it comes to the church. And, uh, 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 and, and, and uh, uh, similar as tending, you know, folks say, well, I'm going to try. But tell your boss, man, you're going to try to be there at 7 o'clock or you're going to try to come to work. <laughs> well, you know, your time is this. And, well, you know, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to get there. <laughs> that tells you you better do more than try. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I know, I know sometimes, you know, <clears throat> you know, you don't need to be habitually late either. I mean, you always right be late sometimes, but just don't be habitually late. Some of y'all look at me funny. Don't, know, don't be just habitually late. Amen. Just go ahead on and be on time. Is it all right? And folk that, you know, uh, uh, that uh, be on time, do a good job, they, they, they stay on that job a long time and retire. But they're good workers. Yeah, good workers. Yeah, but the, 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 the son came to himself. And uh, when he came to himself, he said, I'm going to go back home to my father's house. Amen. And I'm just going to ask him, just let me just be a high servant. Yeah, you, you don't go back arrogant. <laughs> you, you, you don't spin up all your, all your inheritance and ride, listen, here you come back, you know, arrogant. No, you, you have to come back humble. <laughs> come back humble. And uh, he, he went back, and the, the story is that he, uh, the father was looking for him, probably going out every every day, looking for his son. And he saw him. The Bible says, "A great way off, great way off." And he called for the house to have a party. Said, My son was lost, but now he's found. Bring out the ring, kill the fatted cat, bring the robe. We, it's time to celebrate. And the reason why the story is told is that we can know and understand the goodness of God. Even in our uh, sinful ways, God still is working. Uh, he's still working to get us to change our minds and come back to him. And he has uh, opened arms so he's working in all things why is he working is so that he can fulfill the purpose and the purpose is that we might conform 
I'm getting ready to close. Because I, I got about four or five more pages left. And I haven't even gotten into the whole things. But, but I'm going to get ready to close. Because his purpose is that we might conform to the image of his dear son. That, that we might conform to the image of his dear son. Is that, and that, that, that what Romans 8 and verse uh, what? 29? Put that on the screen because I, I want to see that because I'm going to close with this point. That we might what did it say? For whom? For, for whom? He did foreknow. He did foreknow. He also did predestinate. Uh, he also did predestinate. To be conformed. To be conformed. To the image. To the image. Of his son. Of his son. That he might be the firstborn. That born, he might be the firstborn. Among many brethren. Among many brethren. That's the purpose of God's working out all things. God is in the character building business. And the things that happen to us and uh, the sinful, the sorrowful, uh, and also the what? Y'all don't, sorrowful, sinful, and satanic. Y'all don't forget just that quick. <laughs> So the things that happen to us, whether they be sorrowful or whether they be satanic or whether they be sinful, God is working to develop character in us to conform us to the image of God, dear son. And sometimes those things that happen to us are not good, but he's still working to form character in us to get us to be more and more like Jesus Christ so that we can be a, a, a brethren of Christ, that Christ can be the firstborn of many brethren. So when something is happening in your life and you know God is working, what he's doing is working on your character. Either he's trying to put something in you or in us or he's trying to get something out of us that's going to keep us out of heaven. And so God is working. So when you look at those things, you, you, what you have to do is start examining you. Yeah, yeah, I had to examine me. When things happen, and God was saying, so how much you do, do you really trust me? Yeah, you, you, you say you trust me, but when something happens to you, where's your trust? Don't you realize I'm still working? I'm still providing grace. I'm still providing mercy. I'm still providing my presence to give you strength to endure whatever you're going through because you see, even though Jesus was the son of God, he had to suffer. And so the more I know and understand, it's getting to me, God's getting me to a point that I'll trust him. Said in all thy ways, acknowledge him and what he'll do. He will direct your path. I'll at least get one hallelujah on that. Because have you witnessed God directing your path? Have you witnessed God opening doors for you? When you were down, you didn't know what to do, but God opened the door. He worked it out, and the reason why he worked it out, so we could trust him. Praise the Lord. You know, I hear stories all the time. I heard a story the other day. Won't give you any details, but, but uh, 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 brother, ben, brother and Sister Benfield was dealing with the issue of the problem. And they, I mean, and they, they, they really didn't like, you know, what they were seeing for as what they were needing to do. And God just stepped in. Praise the Lord. 
Lord just stepped in. And the thing that, y'all don't mind me telling you, uh, the thing that was going to cost them, uh, somebody gave a quote of $70,000 to correct. Uh, God brought a, a person uh, that examined the situation. And he told them after he examined this man 30 years experience in what they needed him to do. And uh, when he examined the situation, uh, he looked over the, and the side and said, look, I tell you what you do if you get all the equipment, uh, you get all the things that I need. He said, I'm, I'm going to only charge you $1,400. Correct the same problem that will cost $70,000. Somebody ought to say, won't he do it? Uh, won't he do it? He'll bless you when you don't know. I have a way out. Of, uh, he'll bless you with a way out of no way when you don't know what direction. Then we need to tell our young folk, don't you despair. Amen. Yes, get God in your life. There's no reason why you should commit suicide when you know the Lord in your life. There's no reason why to eat. Praise the Lord. That's why people need to know God. That's why we need to know God and have God in our lives because whatever the situation is, God is still working. It may seem impossible to you. And I've told my story over and over again, but some of y'all, y'all got stories. Y'all got stories. Y'all got stories. Tell your story. Tell your story to the goodness of God. Amen. Tell your story how he lifted you up. And tell your story how when you were down, he lifted you up. Tell your story how you were sick, couldn't get well, but he lifted you up. Tell your story where you were financially bankrupt. Praise the Lord. And the repo man is on his way. None of y'all ain't experienced that. I know y'all ain't experienced that. Yeah. <laughs> tell your story how God came through. Told you about when my son was born. They didn't get. They gave him a fifty-fifth chance. Uh, 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 boy John gave him a fifty-fifth chance, and uh, I told him. I said that. I told the doctor. Explained all the technical stuff. I just told him, "You gonna do your best work." He said, "Why? Why you said?" He said, "Because he's a PK." He said, "What a PK?" I said, "He's a preacher's kid." And he got a whole lot of folk praying for him. Hey, Amen. And you're going to do your best work. And he told me, said, you know, I'm a PK too. <laughs> and, and, and God took care of me. And I, I did tell you I, we didn't have no insurance. Didn't I? <laughs> I told you we didn't have no insurance. Praise the Lord. And you know, he worked so well until, until, uh, Lisa, they would they they bent over backwards, you know, to make sure we didn't have a bill when she got out of the hospital. Now I'm not talking about him, but so we couldn't have she couldn't have that bill. And the and, and the administrative lady came to her and said, We've been working with this bill, we done worked it down. We done worked it down, we done worked it down. Yeah. And said, We worked it down to fifteen dollars. Would that be all right? I'm telling you, God is still working in your life, but we have to trust him. And that's what he wants us to do. Because without faith, stand on your feet. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder. Amen. I know he's a rewarder. I could go back to what Paul said, and we know, and he was saying, we know through historical record, and you can read in the Old Testament how he was with Joseph and all the things that happened to him. But then also, I would say we ought to say, I know because of personal experience. Personal experience. I know, I know God's working because of personal experience. And when he came down, they told us that they had about this bill. 
on bad boy John's bill. And uh, they were saying they had to have three major operations. The first one cost right at 200000 Second one about 300000 Fourth one was 400 some thousand. A third one, three. 400 some thousand. Did I tell you we didn't have no insurance? <laughs> And they came in and told us, said, oh, well, the heart, if you're going to have a heart condition, he said, the doctor said, this is the one to have. Because he said, Medicaid, whatever you call it, you know, which I don't know which one. He said, good, it's going to take care of all of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that's shouting to me. Yeah, yeah, amen. And praise the Lord. Yeah. Took care of all of it. Y'all yeah, yeah. must have forgot. Then I tell you I didn't have no insurance. <laughs> Don't tell me what God won't do. Amen. And every time he go back and get a checkup, doing good. Amen. Every time. Doing good. Do you want God to work for you? You want him working in your life and all the stuff you're going through. Then be willing to obey him. Jesus became the author of eternal salvation to all those that obey him. All those that obey him. And uh, when he rose from the dead, he gave what we call the Great Commission. He told them apostles, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Gospel is a good news that Christ died for our sins and was buried, rose again the third day. He said, he that believe it, number one. And is baptized. Number two. Shall be saved. Number three. And he became the author of eternal salvation to all those that obey him. Obey him in obedience and being baptized for the remission of your sins. The same baptism that saves the same baptism we receive remission of your sin. Same baptism that receives remission of your sin is the same baptism that wash away your sin. The same baptism that wash away your sin is the same baptism that puts you in Christ. And the same baptism that puts you in Christ puts you in the body of Christ. And the same baptism that puts you in the body of Christ puts you in the church of Christ. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, the Bible says, by one spirit, we all are baptized into one body. And if you are not in the New Testament church and you've been baptized, it is not the great commission baptism. And not to break any commission right there. And the reason I know that's true is because in Acts 19, you know, uh, you know, Paul found certain disciples. He asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit uh, since you believed? And, he, and they said, no, we ain't never heard of what there be in the Holy Spirit. And Paul said, something got to be wrong here. So he said, ask them, so what then were you baptized? And they said unto John, baptism. So they had been baptized. But Paul taught them about Jesus. And the Bible says, you know, ellipses again, but they were baptized again in the name of Jesus Christ. About the authority of Jesus Christ. I wouldn't take a chance on a baptism 
That's not the Great Commission baptism. Right. Amen. 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 The Great Commission baptism is going to put you in the Christ. Amen. And you and going to put you in the, in the Church of Christ. Amen. 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 And you become a child of God. And you can go on your way rejoicing. I'll get into that in Christ more or next time because I, I'm going to switch after this next sermon. I may do it in sermon. Uh, I'll deal with the subject, the blessings of being in Christ. Yeah, 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 right. uh, Ephesians, all in Ephesians, all over Ephesians, talk about the blessings of being in Christ. But if you're here today and you want God to work for you in your life, you know, God a rain on the just as well as the unjust. Don't you equate salvation because you got a mansion or a big house on the hill. And I know you're giving God credit for that. You should. You know, I mean, don't you equate salvation because you, you're riding in a uh uh I want to say a say the being, but, but, but uh, ride in a Porsche. Porsche. Amen. My brother, he got a Porsche and he got a BMW and all that and everything. And I had called him the other day, uh, yesterday, and, and I, he and my brother, the youngest brother, were together. He probably wasn't on the right screen. But they were together and they was going to pick up my, my cousin at the hospital. And uh, he said, I, I, I would we, come down. I plan to come down uh, for the funeral. I want to come down for the funeral. Uh, all of them knew. Everybody knew Bernard. And I uh, took him around the front. And he said, I would, but, but I don't have no driver. He said, I don't have no driver. And, uh, and uh, uh, my younger brother he said, well, you, you, you become a preacher, you get a driver. <laughs> I told him, I said, you don't have to come and preach and get a driver. I told him, I said, all you need to do is go to the bank, get you some money, and pay you somebody to drive you. <laughs> but I just saying that God reigns on the just as well as unjust. Don't, don't equate just because you got a fine wardrobe. And God bless you with a fine wardrobe. So don't, 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 don't equate that for salvation. Amen. Don't don't equate salvation because you you know you're young and you got you know vim and vigor. God and bless you, you know. Yeah. But even if you keep on living, you're gonna watch it, you're gonna have to you you gonna become like, you know, they gonna they can do some work on you. <laughs> they gonna have to replace some parts and haul up some joints and do all <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But don't equate that with salvation. Salvation, Jesus says, it was when a person believed the gospel and he was baptized. They read salvation, they receive. That, that's in the book. That's in the book. Now, I can't preach nothing else. I, I'm, I'm preaching the word. What God does uh, as an exact decision, that's up to God. But I'm only uh, 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 commanded to preach is the word. That's what Paul said. Preach the word. In season, out of season. Exhorting all long suffering and doctrine. See, the time will come and time has come. That men will not endure sound doctrine. They'll hear everything else. Believe everything else. But what this book says, I'm going to stay with the book. I'm going to stay with the book. I said, I'm going to stay with the book. And if you're going through something right now, don't go through it by yourself. You know, just, just a young, young lady at, at Murray High School. You know, was disappointed in what the teacher told her. Just ran out of school and jumped off the bridge, killed herself. See, you, that, that's that's a person trying to handle life by themselves. None of us. And you know, you can be an old person, you still you can't handle life by yourself. 
You as a wolf, you can't handle life by yourself. Because Jesus said, without me, you can't do nothing. What's our song of invitation? Jesus gave his life for ransom. Y'all know Calvary. Thank you, son. On Mount Calvary. Cruel Calvary. Where he paid the way we might win a in crown. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down. Oh, glory, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down from heaven. Tell it today, tell it tomorrow, the word of God, that we might win the crown and tell the Lord of Lord, salvation is cool and free to sin or pray. Tell it all for and praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. God bless you. Amen. Let's give Brother Pimmon another love deposit. Uh, Carlin came up, Carlin Nichols came up, and he just wanted us to be mindful of him in prayer. Uh, he said midterms are coming up, and, and he want to do well there. And also uh, want us to be praying uh, for his growth in life and his pursuit of spiritual growth. So uh, let's continue to be mindful of, of him. Uh, and, and also be mindful of, of me, because, uh, you know, we want to be able to not only uh, say the right thing that we need to say to our children, but be the right example that we need to be. And so uh, just pray for me as a father, a husband, and your brother in Christ uh, that God would be pleased. Uh, would you be so kind, Kermit? Okay, you got a request. Uh, I just want to say this real quickly. I know we've had uh, many birthdays this month, but I've got to mention my daughter, my baby, turned 16 today. Very proud of her. Uh, went the other day and got a little permit. Don't know how to drive yet, but she got a permit. We're working with her, so she is uh, she's just growing up. And I just thank God uh, for her and Caleb for their faithfulness. That's what's most important to me, that they remain faithful to God. That's, that's number one. And long as they do that, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Go ahead, Carl. Let us pray at this time. Gracious Father, we just thank you so much for all that you have done for us, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. Thank you for the message from your manservant this morning, uh, Father, who shared your word in a bold and powerful manner. And I pray that you will continue to be with Brother Pittman as he strives each Sunday to give us the food that is necessary for us all to grow and mature. Thank you, Father, for those who responded in their own way uh, this morning, Father. We pray on behalf of them. Uh, Father, we pray that their uh, prayers would be answered. We pray for those who are bereaved, uh, those who are going through situations in their lives. Father, that they just hold tightly, close to you. Father, and that you will see them through their situation. Help us to be that example. Those who are going through, who have gone through situations in their lives. Help us to be that example to them, Father, and to give them the words of comfort that they need in order to get through the situations in their lives. Be with those who are here today, Father. Uh, we just thank you so much that we can come together and fellowship again in your name. For those who are streaming in, we pray on behalf of them as well. We love you so much for all that you do, Father. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins to make this life possible, but most important, for the life that... Uh, that you have promised us to live eternally with you, Father. That's what we look forward to. 
We love you for all that you do. For it's in your son's name we pray. Let us all say, amen. Let the church say amen again. Let's give Pitt another love deposit for another outstanding, fitting message on uh, this morning. I want to take just a quick second to recognize uh, one individual. I have one uh, visitor's card, and I want to uh, share his name. I want to give him a love deposit. His name is Keith Brother, Keith Harris. He's from Mid Meridian Street in Moss Point, and he also worships the congregation in uh, Alabama. He's with us this morning, so give him a love deposit. Fine, fine brother. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Come back and see us every opportunity uh, that you can. You know, brother Pittman mentioned Bernard's personality. Sister Herbie and I, when we were leaving, by the way, we had a great time. We thank God for taking us out there to Vegas and bringing us back safely. On our way out to New Orleans, Bernard called and he said, Herbie, we were in the car driving to New Orleans to catch a flight. He said, Herbie, y'all know he's a jokester. Herbie, I don't know whether to suggest Sister Herbie wears her hair up or down. Have a good time and be safe. That's the last conversation I had with Bernard. We certainly are going to miss him. So again, the services will be uh, this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock. And then at the Jackson Memorial will be the public viewing from, I believe it's 2 to 4 o'clock, I believe. Okay? All right. So let's keep them in prayer. All right? Is he here? Okay. Kenneth McBride, is he here this morning? Okay. He was one of the ones. Is Ziggy here? Okay, okay, all right, we'll present those, Brother Pippen will present those baptismal certificates uh, hopefully on next week. One other announcement, CJ uh, indicated that he has a fundraiser that's going on and the items that were purchased, you need to see his mother, and if you want to support the effort that he's involved in, see him for that as well, okay? All right, Sister Upkins and Other, I believe it's Other here. All right, just a couple of minutes. They want to share some information about the Black History Program for the rest of the month. So let's give them a love deposit as they come forward. It's been a great month. Y'all can take your seats. It's all right. We'll take your seats. We'll be with a quick second. Uh, yes, thank you all so much, and we are just encouraging everybody to participate in this effort for black history, and just so you'll know, we've decided we're going to do 365 days, so black history is every day, so we'll have something every month, okay? Yeah. Uh, but we want to focus on two things right now. Our major event, our major fundraiser is coming up this particular Saturday, and Oprah's going to uh, share details about that, but before he comes, I want to share with you sponsorship. We want every member here who has a business to participate or purchase one of the sponsorships. I know you will, I know I can depend on you, and I know you can. And the sponsorships are $250 up to $499. That comes with four tickets for the Black History event Saturday. The next uh, level, and that's called the Blackish level. The next level is Black and Proud level. That's $500 to $999. It comes with six tickets. And then the next level is the black power level. $1,000 to 1999 comes with eight tickets. And the last level is black gold level. 2000 plus comes with 10 tickets. So we're asking if you have a business or you can be an individual. Uh, the Upkins have led the way. I have a check for CJ and Charlie Upkins, and I have a, a check for my company for a sponsorship level. So we're asking you, and I've just, I have written down at least 13 businesses just came to me off the top of my head. So we're just asking you to please participate. We want to uh, raise money for Christian education and HBCU. Opa? And to add to that, Carolyn, uh, those sponsors will be recognized on Saturday during our virtual uh, program. So I had all of this stuff that I wanted to say, but then I heard Allie was 16. <laughs> Everything just escaped my memory, but. Uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, especially leading on Wednesday night. So let's give her another round of applause. Thank you so much. We do appreciate that. But real quick, uh, we want to talk just a little bit about what's going to happen on Saturday. That's our virtual uh, Black History program. So we decided that we needed to do something uh, in the middle uh, or in the midst of all of this. So Saturday at 6 o'clock, we are doing a virtual Black History program on Zoom. And I think that we'll also cast it to 
uh, the church's Facebook page as well. So you'll need a link, and so when you register, you'll be emailed a link to participate uh, in this program. We've got uh, Mad Drama from Jackson State. Uh, CJ is going to be uh, on program as well. Uh, Miriam is going to sing. So we've got a great, great, great uh, Black History program for you. We're going to also have a conversation about the relevancy of HBCUs. We've got the president of Mississippi Valley State that's going to be with us and the president of Tougaloo College uh, is going to be with us uh, as well. So lots of fun. Program is playing. Be with us Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. We'll start letting you in the Zoom room at about 5.45. So we'll email you a link, get registered. I think uh, we're asking for a $20 donation uh, to participate, but please come and join us Saturday for our Black History virtual program. And thank you all so much in, in advance for your support. We really appreciate you. And appreciate you wearing your African attire. I know if you want to stay afterwards and take some pictures, Brenda will take your pictures. At Black History Committee, we're going to be meeting immediately afterwards, okay? Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Let us be standing. Let's give them a love deposit. All right, let's give the benediction at this time. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rule, rest, and abide with us until we come together again. In Jesus' holy name, we ask it all. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen.